Listener Production. Warm, enjoyable and chock full of nuts. Just like a sneaky mid-morning brownie. And I can't live without it! It's Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast. Whoa, big happy birthday to us. Uh, a little bit prematurely because it's not until next Friday, but we are very, very excited to have announced yesterday that we are hosting a birthday party. And I'll tell you what, these tickets have wings because they're flying out the door, Alex Dyson. <laughs> well, that's it. And I've been managed to keep tabs on uh, the tickets to Matt and Alex's all day breakfast, one year anniversary party. And uh, at the moment, we have six left. Um, so you better get on it quick. Bear in mind, you could be listening to this tonight, in which case it's, they're probably gone. But the good news is we have saved a couple. There could be a few extra releases. Keep an eye on the website if you did miss out. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to come along to Comedy Republic on Wednesday evening to hear our one year show, um, which we're getting excited for today, Matt O'Kine. We've got a couple of things we want to do at the uh, at the live show, one of which is... Uh, have a good birthday song. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. We're also going to be chatting to someone who works behind the scenes. That's right, Insiders is back. And we're going to have an insight into a profession in Australia that some people don't know too much about. Well, it's very close to my heart right now, Alex Dyson, because there's, I mean, it's all going down. Um, In my community, (laughs) involving these people... Uh, this particular type of worker. And I'm going to pick their brains, I'll tell you that much. It's going to be Matt O'Kine asking questions. That's <laughs> it. That's all hey, it's going to be. Hey, there's petitions out on the street right now. It's 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 This is big news in my community, so I've got, I'm going to be picking their brains about what best to do. Also, the nation's biggest shock jock has ruffled feathers once again. Uh, some news coming out of Rant Dog yesterday. The inbox blowing up faster than a Matt and Alex one-year anniversary party. Um, should we top sheet? Should we not? We're going to have to get into it, Matt, I think. I was gobsmacked at some of the responses. <laughs> Honestly, I, and I'm actually I'm quite ashamed at the nation. Wow. Right, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it a little bit later on. This is Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast. Hope you're having a cracker. This is just the start. Everyone ready? Let's get this show on the road. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast. Yes, Matt, it's going to be a massive celebration next week to uh, mark the fact that All Day Breakfast has been running for one Year And as we mentioned, tickets are pretty much gone, uh, unless you keep an eye on the website. There could be a couple of extras being released as we get closer to next Wednesday night. But there is a different way that you're able to get on the door, and it's for three as well. Yeah, that's right. Look, no good party uh, can take place without banging tunes. And probably the most lit tune of them all... It's quite apt for this occasion, Alex Dyson. Do you know a song called Good Morning to All? Um, My year one teacher, Mrs. Gellert, used to sing a song, Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. And then all the kids would go, (laughs) doopy-doo. Is that the one you're talking about? That is not the one, but that sounds like a jam. i got to tell you. Oh, she was sick. She put out the axe. You'd get on the guitar, the acoustic guitar, and she would strum it. And I'll tell you what, the doing the doopy-doos, that was the highlight of (laughs) a a seven-year-old Alex Dyson's Um, morning. Well, look, uh, your teacher sounds like Miss Patty Hill, from uh, who was a kindergarten principal in Louisville, Kentucky, in the 1890s, Mm. who allegedly um, composed a song called Good Morning to All. And the song went like this. Good morning to all. Good morning to all. Good morning, dear children. Good morning to all. Right? That then gets lifted, transformed around about 1910, 1912 to Happy Birthday to You. Right? And then becomes... By the late 90s, according to Guinness World Records, the most recognised song in the English language, only seconded by For He's a Jolly Good Fellow. Are you telling me Patty Hill was last turn of the century's Tones and I? Are you telling me that that just going viral out of nowhere? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, and you know what? Your kindergarten, your teacher could very well have been the next Patty Hill because, I mean, in 100 years' time, we could all be singing Happy Birthday Doopy doo. <laughs> do you doopy doo? <laughs> Chuck that in there. Well, that is right. We do want a happy birthday there, but it's I I think 
and maybe this is just me who loves a raging banger, Matt O'Kine, but I think singing happy birthday a cappella in this day and age falls a little bit flat. Oh, it's done, mate. Barbershop quartets. Ugh. That, I mean, the old pinstripe, you know, candy candy jackets. I mean, they're, they're, they're a little bit last century, you yeah. know? I mean, people are, people are getting crafty with their music now. Yeah, we want to we want to bring people together, and so if you would like to come along to um, Matt and Alex first birthday spectacular, but you don't want to fork out the eighteen bucks for a ticket, and you've got a small small hint of musical talent, we want to put you on the guest list. We are trying to put together the official Matt and Alex all day breakfast awkward orchestra, the awkward stra. Now, Alex Dyson, when I was growing up in primary school, the most teased instrument of them all, right? Yep. The recorder. Now, my <laughs> sister had a whole bunch of recorders from huge jumbo size to tiny little piccolos, and I loved them. Mm. And I played them. I played them all through primary school at home, you know, in my little snuff box. I have lots of snuff. Um, <laughs> what? I think that's... Is that a, what's snuff? Like I don't tobacco? know. I think, it was, I think it was some sort of sniffing tobacco, but... <laughs> But for some reason... You did that in primary school? No, but this is in like a recorder book. I mean, it was probably from the 1800s itself. Like, that was yeah. the song. It was called In My Little Snuff Box. I have lots of snuff. Anyways. Oh my I'm not God. joking. <laughs> Anyways. And I played all those. I was really gearing up to get yeah get the saxophone handed to me when I when I applied for my musical instrument. I got the tuba instead. Almost cried when they, when they gave me the letter, but... For all of the five year five, six and seven, I wore a big tuba on my back. So <laughs> I can oh, play the tuba. Well, it doesn't matter what you can play. You can play the recorder, you can play the tuba, you can play the gum leaf. We do not mind. But if you'd like to come along and play in our awkward stra, uh, please submit a video audition to the Matt and Alex Instagram DM inbox. Now I've brought along a couple of examples of things you can play. Oh. All right. I've got a um, melodica. Here, borrowed off woods. So I thought I'd give you a little example of playing happy birthday on okay. the melodica. A little So this is happy birthday on the melodica. On the melodica. Here we go. Here we go. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, it's working. All right. So this is a little keyboard. <clears throat> Has a tube coming out of it yep. that you put your mouth on and you press down the key and you blow to make the sound. Okay. Yep. So here we go. Wait a second. No. No, no. <laughs> Did you just tricky Nicky? <laughs> yeah, tricky Nicky Joe. <laughs> oh. <That's... laughs> Very kisses. <laughs> oh, man. Are you... Okay. Okay, well, sorry. I'll do it properly the, now. I'll the do it the properly. nation has now officially been... <laughs> By a, by a, what is it called? A, a, a melodica. Oh, my God. That's the nerdiest Tricky Dicky <laughs> yes! I've ever heard. Tricky Dicky Jewel of the melodica. <laughs> you rascals. All right, now let's go properly here. Happy birthday, dear. Matt and Alex's all day breakfast. You. <laughs> Jazz hands. So there's an example of one, a melodica. And I've also got this other instrument. I forget the name of it. Maybe kalimba, I think. But it is a half a coconut, mm. all right, which has been put over with a uh, piece of wood with a hole like a guitar. And it's got these little metal twigs coming off it over the hole. And it makes a little sound. Now, this one's not working Ooh, that's great. that's earthy. That so sounds it's earthy. not working great. And also, I don't know what any of the notes are. There's just longer ones and shorter ones. And so this is how it's going to be. <clears throat> oh, my God. Were you trying to play it? <laughs> I don't know what these notes are. Okay. <laughs> mm, yeah, like, I mean, I see it. That was kind of like an so artist's impression. It's a bit rusty. Look, it's genuine. Like when I say it's a bit rust, like I'm a bit rusty, it's genuinely has rust on it. So <laughs> that, that is, is a tetanus um, trap, my friend. Well, look, 
We want you to submit your videos of playing whatever wild and wacky instruments that you know how, or even if you don't know how, just give it a crack. Send them to at matt.and.alex. We want, to, we, we've got tickets to give away to our um, first ever birthday party, Big Bash Extravaganza Extraordinaire Bonanza. Send us your video submissions. We want you to be in the orchestra. And just like I showed you there, it doesn't have to be good. All right, we want to make it, you know, with passion rather than, you know, absolute precision. Okay, passion beats precision every time. Except for when it comes to surgery. Surgery is probably <laughs> take precision. <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. I would take a precise surgeon over an enthusiastic one. <laughs> Just sure. But for slicing music. Slicing and dicing for fun. The music, <laughs> for music. It's the absolute opposite. Yeah, so, yeah, um, of course, of course. Be like this high school recently. They've got an orchestra. Now, these are musicians in a band, and it's it's a concert with people in attendance, and this is them playing Jingle Bells. We want the same amount of passion for the Matt and Alex Happy First Birthday Orchestra. Here it is. Have one word. Touchdown. All right, that was incredible. So if you would like to join us for the first birthday spectacular and help us celebrate in style, please send a video of yourself. Let us know your name and where you're from. Uh, and then happy birthday on whatever you want. Uh, we'd like to judge it. We'll get you along. You can bring a friend as well. We'll give you a second free ticket to come along. And uh, then it's just time to party, Matt O'Kain. Yeah, now look, unfortunately you have to be from Victoria to enter, okay? Uh, we There are only limited tickets and also we don't have the technology to hologram you into the performance. <laughs> yeah, so. It works for Tupac, doesn't necessarily work <laughs> for Matt and Alex this time around. Maybe by the, our 10th birthday we'll have the uh, the hologram orchestra. But uh, until then, we need the locals to get amongst it and uh, hopefully put together a pretty tidy super group there, Matt. See you soon. Coffee? Yeah, coffee. A seventh coffee never hurt anyone. Now I feel a buzz. Well, it was bound to happen, Matt O'Kine. Joe Biden had a pretty good run after his inauguration, getting that vaccine out nice and fast. Okay, trying to turn things around there. He's even come out and uh, pledged that the US, by 2030, will reduce their emissions by 50 to 52%, which is uh, quite a big call. Uh, for the US president, a big turnaround from his predecessor, Donald Trump, who um, said windmills caused cancer at one point. Um, I believe might have referred to them as bird cemeteries. But um, <laughs> but this uh, this particular target <laughs> that Joe has has set has what does, it, what does he think the windmills do to cause the cancer? <laughs> it's the sound of it. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. It's the vibrations, I think. I think is what he's um, going at there. Maybe in the breakdancing sense, windmill could cause some kind of like body, you yeah. know, formation. Like if you keep rubbing your forehead on the ground <laughs> as you, like, do you know what I mean? Like it might cause a yeah. lump or something. Yeah. Now look, it, that's, it's God's out of it. So he's, Joe Biden's announced this. Now, unfortunately for Joe, a few uh, Republican pundits few people over at Fox News, in fact, no less than five people at Fox News have come out and um, said that this plan is awful because it means Joe Biden wants Americans to not eat red meat anymore. Now, there was no word of that in Joe Biden's speech. He was saying it's going to be infrastructure, a little investing in renewable energy and those kind of things. Didn't mention the, <laughs> mention the meat, but it turns out that a Daily Mail UK article... Oh, might have been the things confusing, confusing these people who are jumping up and uh, claiming that Joe Biden is uh, going to start controlling America's diet. For one, I'm happy, okay, because it's about time there was something in the news about the US president. It has been too long, <laughs> all right? It was very quiet for a long time. And, and moments like these, these passages of quietness just make you realise, you know, 
It's like having Ramsey Street where there are no <laughs> extramarital affairs. You know, like it's just, it's, you can't have an, a community without drama. So, yes, finally, we've got a president who's annoying people again. Let's do it. Yes, yeah. everyone's going to be, a, has to stop eating meat. Finally back. Um, unfortunately, they seem to be going, even though there's no sign of this, they seem, the rhetoric seems to be ramping up to the point where. Ex-Trump advisor Larry Kudlow got on the telly and accused Joe Biden of planning this. To meet the Biden Green New Deal targets, America has to stop eating meat, stop eating poultry, fish, seafood, eggs, dairy, and animal-based fats. Okay, we got that? No burgers on July 4th. No steaks on the Barbie. I'm sure middle America is just going to love that. So get ready. You can throw back a plant-based beer with your grilled Brussels sprouts and wave your American flag. This kind of thinking is stupid. So Larry's taken this Daily Mail article in which they said one way of lowering emissions in America is to eat less meat and has now said that Joe Biden is going to actually enforce this on Americans to the point where Americans will have to drink. You can throw back a plant-based beer... A plant-based beer. Now, if there's someone in this room that knows beers, it's Matt O'Kine. Matt O'Kine, what goes into beer? Oh, good question. Um, malt, barley, hops, and depending on which house party you're at, a lot of cigarette butts, okay? <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> I've ended up with all of that in my mouth at times when you've been switched up. <laughs> no, no, you haven't dropped oh, the mate, ciggy beer. I used to live with smokers, and I'll tell you what, I copped, I've copped a butt bashing on my lips <laughs> many a time, all right? It's absolutely disgusting. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, <laughs> it seems that this ex-Trump advisor, very, very... <laughs> Very annoyed that he's going to have to be drinking plant-based but even, beer. By the way, even cigarette butts, still tobacco, you know, plants. still plants. It is still plants. <laughs> You're still absolutely right. Greenery. No, grains, hops, <laughs> yeast, a um, bit of barley sometimes in there. Um, it goes into beer. It is, you know, for the most part plant-based. I think they're getting a little bit crazy now. Maybe there's some lactose in a couple of these beers coming Ooh. out now. Well, I know that sometimes beers use some, um, oh, it's the same thing they do in wine. You know how they say this has fish products and it's got, it's because it's some tiny tiny powder or something they put into it to clarify it. There's also um, vegan wines that ne aren't necessarily vegan because there's so many, like, insects on the plants. Dude, this is... And they go through <laughs> and it's, you're eating animals, baby. <laughs> so, anyways, I don't think these are the type of drinks that old Larry, old Lazaruni, was uh, talking about. No. Plant-based beer. Plant -based I mean, when, beer, you, when you talk about base, the base of a beer, plant-based beer, yeah. they're all plant-based. They're all it. based and, on plants. And Matt, this is Joe Biden's America. His beers are going to be plant-based from now on as well. And I've actually, you know, I'm, you know, I've got an insider at the White House. You know I'm friends with someone at the White House. They've slipped me the plan, the Biden plan. I didn't know you were still catching up with Pentagon Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, they're different buildings, but no, Pentagon Paul oh. does, does occasionally go across town to the White yeah, House. But, well, he's not going to be called White House Walter because obviously <laughs> everyone would know that he works at the White House. That's why he calls himself Pentagon Paul and he actually works at the White House. You fool, you've given it away. Well, okay, well, not their real names, but I've been <laughs> given a slip that as well as plant-based beers, mm. Joe Biden has a pretty, pretty sneaky plan for America, and I've got a few other things on his agenda. In Joe Biden's America, water is going to have double the hydrogen in it than it has oxygen. Unbelievable. Wow. He's going to be introducing a controversial birds must have a beak policy, um, which has taken a lot of people by surprise. He's fighting for denim-based jeans, concave spoons and see-through windows. He's, he's even going to be guaranteeing that under his administration, every photo of the Yeti will be blurry. <laughs> <laughs> you see, someone caught a Lynx the other day. It was blurry. <laughs> but this, like, yep. We have the most... Impressive phones in our po like cameras <laughs> in our pockets that you could ever get. Like, 
You literally can burst right now. Well, you Joe Biden burst. is making sure that it will remain the way it is. Um, he's, in fact, he's also signing an executive order that ensures all Vance Joy songs have ukulele. All right? <laughs> and he's going as far that his upcoming 2024 re-election slogan is Make Americans Prone to Outrage Again. So it's going to be a very different world once Joe has his way. We send our thoughts and prayers to all our American listeners. May you get through this tough, tough time. Order up! Just how you like it, sir. Are you keeping juicy goss from me? Do you know what's going on here? We know what's going on. You won't believe it. Real juicy. So let's just keep it on the down low, shall we? Matt and Alex's Insiders. Insiders. Poor Alex Dyson. Absolute shockwave sent through um, my community recently. Um, a daycare centre being uh, being closed down. Really? Right? Oh, What was it, yeah. asbestos? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit dark. No, there's something, there's, well, actually, maybe. There's something wrong with the building. Anyway, look. There is. Well, they're, I they're, called it. There you go. <laughs> well, that, and, the, and the, the council's wanting to sell the block. Um, people, Parents are absolutely outraged. It takes so long to get your child comfortable at a daycare that when they suddenly get kicked out, it's like there's it's full-blown turmoil. People are – I've never seen – Parents making this many phone calls. Well, there's tears. It's it's drama. So that, they haven't seen this much drama in the community since Heather Locklear moved onto Melrose Place. I'll tell you that much. Okay. <laughs> well, you'll be very happy with today's insiders. The segment where we talk to someone from a profession to get the uh, behind the scenes goss as to what actually goes on. And today's anonymous insider works as a daycare worker. They join us now. Hello, anonymous. Hi guys. Now, Anonymous, I'm very interested in the behind the scenes of, of what I don't see at the daycare centre when, uh, you know, in between when I drop my daughter Sophia off and pick her up. Uh, how long have you been working at a daycare centre for? Uh, so I've been working in different daycare centres for about 10 years. It's funny you actually mentioned asbestos. One of our buildings did have that. Oh, no! <laughs> what was the controversy around that? What, what did the government say? What did the parents say? Uh, well, it was all very hush hush. Um, so the staff members were getting sick a lot, and no. they just complained about cracks in the walls. <laughs> um, and so yeah, they had to shut the whole building down for a few months while they quote unquote renovated. <laughs> Do you know what? I reckon that's what's probably going on with ours. I reckon you're right. That is probably I'm, what's going on. I'm sorry, Matt. That was a stupid <laughs> joke that I said, which has now made us a little bit worried. So um, look, everyone. Oh, great. Thanks. Well, it's fine. So, Everyone's been wearing masks there for the last 12 months, <laughs> so hopefully it will be fine. So anonymous. Okay. So there are, there is, there's big politics. What I didn't realise is that there's big money and big politics in daycare centres. Yeah, correct. Especially the privately owned ones. Oh, okay. They're, they're little institutes, I guess, um, training up the tots to uh, a little, little money-making machine. You don't even see a, a baby, do you? You just see <laughs> money on legs. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm just one of the workers. All I see is money, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, so, see, um, well, that's, well, I don't know, I have a child myself, but all I hear is about childcare is so expensive. Does that mean you're really rich, Anonymous? Uh, no, no. Uh, the money generally goes to the people owning the centres. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of frustrating. Um, do you get annoyed by that? Uh, when they uh, refuse to buy us resources, yes. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not bet. the ones wiping up snotty noses and <laughs> helping people in the potty. Well, <laughs> actually, Alex, Dyson, let's talk about snotty noses. Let's talk about sick kids, all right? Because oh. sometimes, and look, I'm not going to, you know, and I and I probably shouldn't say it on, you know, national on national platform. Yeah, your voice isn't you the do- one being hidden here, Matt. <laughs> Just remember that. Do you dose your child up with that at all? No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. But I tell you what, sometimes you walk in the gates you see some kid, absolute rivers of snot pouring down their face. As soon as you look at them, you think, oh, what are their bloody parents doing sending them in looking like that? Now we're all going to get sick. This is bloody outrageous. Daycare centre should have sent them home. And then when your kid gets sick, you're like, okay, just wipe your face real quickly. You <laughs> jam a toilet paper. Come on, just get it quickly. And then you're shoving them through the door and you make a run for it. What's your, what are you, what's your policy? 
Oh, you have no idea how many parents do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so around about 11, 12 o'clock is when the Panadol wears off. Um, and so that's generally when the fevers and the runny noses happen. But normally if we wipe their nose three times and it's green snot, then we call the parents and send them home. Mm. Whether or not the parents answer is a different story. Oh, they do the old... (laughs) (laughs) New phone who dis ya. (laughs) (laughs) Because, I mean, well, I mean, how often do you get sick then? Because we had gastro go through the centre recently and it floored everyone in our household except for me, somehow dodged it. Um, so what, 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 yeah, how often are you getting the gastro and what hap- what's it like when, when you're under siege? Uh, it's pretty bad. Gastro, head lice, uh, hand, foot and mouth has been going around the center what? as well. Whoop, whooping cough. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. Goodness do you me. Get, do you get in, hit by any of these? Uh, the gastro and the head lice. Yes. Mm. Oh my God. Now tell me about, uh, the, the playground politics. Okay. Because... <laughs> I didn't know this going into daycare life, okay, um, that you got to keep the beefs, okay, the playground beefs between the kids, you got to keep them kind of secret. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is, Alex, I don't know if you know this, no. but you'll, you'll go to pick up your, your kid, right, and it's one of two things. They'll be like, um, so... Your child got hit in the face by another child today. That's why they've been crying. That's why they've got a scratch on the face. And you're like, okay. <laughs> so who was it? And they're like, we can't tell you this. <laughs> that answer, right? They, that's, that's the rule, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Because um, the amount of parents in the, in the past that have gone looking for that child, that hit their child, <laughs> and tried to take up the beef with them. Yeah, it, it's a definitely a personal issue, privacy issue. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Is there, like, little fight clubs in the playground or something? <laughs> Anonymous. Uh, fights over toys. There's, you know, nothing organised because they're, you know, free. <laughs> yeah, so. they're not the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got a whack. We got a whack Jimbo by the sandpit. It's more like you've got the colour spade that I want. I'm going to bite it out of your hand. Oh my god! Do you like it though? Do you do you laugh with the kids? Do they make you laugh? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I love it. Um, watching them kind of explore their environment and learn—it's really, it's really fascinating. Mm. Well, we used to work at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation Anonymous, uh, and every now and again, you get people, you know, sending you free T-shirts, free things to try and do it, and we had to say, no, 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 public broadcaster, we can't do that. Now, we think we kind of alluded to it before, but watching things like Modern Family, where they have whole storylines of trying to get their kids into the best daycare, do you have parents trying to um, schmooze you a little bit? No, because then they get, they get onto waiting lists when they want to come into the centre and it's completely controlled by the administration side. So we don't actually see any of that. But they have had to put a cap on Christmas presents. So <gasps> only $30. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because they were buying such extravagant presents for you guys. Yeah, and it was like favouritism. So one one teacher in the room would get a really nice necklace and the other others would get, you know, a box of favourites. <laughs> Oh, so funny. Hey, um, what about, let's talk about the, what's on the menu because some of these places, I mean, oh my God. Ex- looking through some of the daycares, I'm, I'm got, like, uh, you'd think they were eating in bloody Michelin starred restaurants. There's, <laughs> there's quinoa and, you know, sauteed beef on the menu and all these vegetarian lasagna, just really nice, healthy things. Do you ever, do you ever swing past the kitchen and say, oh, give us some you know, nibble? Oh, all the time. You what? know, especially when the garlic bread goes around. What? Um, yeah, it's <laughs> got, a free for all. You got garlic bread at your daycare. <laughs> what else yeah, is on there? But yeah, lasagna. We've got sanchoy bao. Are you kidding? Um, <laughs> make make your own hamburgers. Are you <laughs> like? Cost, is this actually what it costs you? One hundred and thirty dollars a day. <laughs> we we at my childcare, and I hate to get all back in my day on this. We had sultanas and cheese plastic singles. That was that was what we had every single day, and I hated the plastic cheese, so I just ate sultanas. Well, we did have an incident with a company that, because um, for a while we didn't have a consistent chef, so we had a, a company bring in meals, and it was honestly prison food. It was yeah. like 
<laughs> well, you didn't have your live-in chef at the daycare. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Mate, you got to go with the one with the live-in chef, honestly. Oh, my goodness. Like, like, look, I'll tell you what. You know what's so annoying? Last night, I'm like, oh, got some noodles. Going to uh, gonna cook some noodles. It's like something different for Sophia. Very excited. I cook noodles and I get my little story park update, okay, what Sophia been up to during the day, pictures of her, a picture of the lunch menu. That bloody had t- Japanese teppanyaki noodles. I was like, <laughs> what? Oh, I've, I've been shown up. Of course she's not going to eat my crap when she's having... With, with shiitake mushrooms, like come off it. <laughs> That's um, ridiculous. Now, do you um, have do you have uh, kids of yourself uh, of yourself anonymous kids for, for yourself? No. What's, what's the phrase I'm trying to say? Here? In, working this long in childcare, I I don't want children anymore. Wow, <laughs> wow! You've seen how it's made behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodness me, well, that's how incredible. It's made, Alex. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but if you did, what would you what would you tell parents who are putting their kids into childcare? What's a little tip that'll really help them on their childcare daycare journey? Uh, if you enter into a centre and it's way too clean, then run run <gasps> the other way. Oh, why? Because it means that they care more about image than they do actually quality of care. Wow. Now, this what? is the yes. kind of stuff yes. that you only get on the Insiders segment. Okay. Anonymous, thank you very wait, much. Wait, wait, wait. Anything else? Anything else you can share like that? Any other tips? Um, yeah, so basically when they try and cram as many children into one room, it's, it's really, really bad for the children's mental health. So it's the smaller class sizes, the better. Goodness me. All Ooh, right. Well, okay. when you're dropping well. off your most prized possession uh, to, <laughs> to a random fenced area uh, and in your area, please be very, very wary and uh, take Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast Anonymous's insider's advice. Um, we thank you very much, Anonymous. Cheers for joining us. Thank you, guys. And um, oh, before you go, what's the most random thing a kid said? They say the darndest things. So um, um, They were doing collages. And um, this girl started cutting out a picture of a Jack Daniels bottle and went, that's my daddy's favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I didn't know that um, <laughs> you worked at my daughter's daycare. Okay. Well, uh, that's, that's worrying. I'm going to be careful about what I'm going to start using a stubby cooler. Anyways, uh, thank you very much, Anonymous. Thank you, guys. Bye. And if you... Work somewhere. That's the that's what we've. That's the only criteria we have for you. Um, but we would like to know about it. What are the things that people don't realize about your profession? Please get in touch with what you do. Hit us up on the uh, the DMs matt.n.alex on Instagram, and uh, you could be our next anonymous insider. So, Maddie, how you feeling, mate? Oh, I'm feeling very disheartened. Alex disheartened? Carson. Yeah, I'm feeling very, very down at the moment. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we come in here day in, day out amidst a pandemic, yep. Alex Dyson. Rarely we're in the same room. We slave away day in, day out finding interesting and funny things to talk about, mm-hmm. sometimes constructing hilarious lists, darkest days, schedules, timetables. I've spent hours putting together songs about good <laughs> vacuums. And what do we get? Squat. Right? <laughs> That's not true. Then some, some idiotic shock jock <laughs> comes on our show Mm. And rants about utter garbage, saying that top sheets, an absolute staple of the bedding environment, are no longer welcome in our homes. Suddenly, the bloody telephone lights up. Mate, why do you think the shock jocks get the ratings, okay? They touch the nerve (laughs) of the nation. And uh, Rant Dog has been doing that for a number of weeks now. Yesterday... Um, after Blaze from Perth got in touch about um, useless br- blankets that go on the couch, uh, Rant Dog made the very, very good point, in my opinion, that top sheets oh are God. done. No one uses them. They deserve no place in a modern bed. And uh, it's time to uh, get over it. Now, <laughs> there's still, still some people out there clinging on, 
they like they like to hang on. We got quite a few messages here, Matt. I expected this to be another another sour cream whitewash. Honestly, <laughs> I thought this was going to go the way of the wedge, and you were going to walk out with an absolute dollop of sweet chili on your face. But instead, the Buddy Nation has come out in defence of your what I can only say as completely ridiculous theory. Okay, so here we go. Uh, some people are on my side. Okay, it does slip flip flop. So Carly says, no top sheet. Sorry, I agree with Alex. Top sheets are there to tangle people up to their deaths. Yep. They are the worst. So true, Carly. Um, Bryson's the same. Uh, no top sheet. Literally making my bed as I listen to Alex. 100% correct. The top sheet is a waste. It always ends up scrunched at the end of the bed, forgotten, never to be used again. Down with top sheets. How and I'm about sure this? making the bed didn't take very long because you just roll, <laughs> flap out the doona and away you go. Marley Grace says, no top sheet. No, nope, top sheets are for the bin. I use <laughs> mine on the back of the upright piano to mellow out the sound because why would I use it on my bed? Ah! Look, there are people who are still still on fans of the top sheets. Uh, Jackie says top sheet is a must. It's called a sheet set for a reason. It's a set together, both, not a half set. That's like half a sandwich. No. Jackie, I bet you eat the little plastic table that comes with the pizza as well. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Trent says, what the F, Alex? No top sheet. Well, someone's never spent time during summer up here on the Northern Rivers. New South Wales having to deal with the humidity and mozzies, have hey, they? If you, I'm not saying a top sheet cannot go it alone. If it's the if it's the warmest thing there, you know, if it's too warm, go it alone. But if you've got a doona over the top, don't it's strangle about, yourself oh, with, with the so second crisp. cling wrap nice. layer. No, doonas are they they're rougher. You need that nice Egyptian cotton to just caress it, kiss your, yeah, kiss you your use, body parts. Yeah, dude, it's often made out of sandpaper, Matt. <laughs> You're right. You need protection from that. Um, They're look, too bulky. Jala from Mount Gambia, which side are you on? To top sheet or not to top sheet? Well, you have to have a top sheet, and I'm actually shocked that you have so many children listening to your show. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, all our normal grown-ups, we actually have the top sheet because it's the way that beds are meant to be made. Goodness. Yeah, Good thanks, you. Have you ever been to a hotel, a fancy hotel, and it's all nice and it's comfy and it's the most comfortable sleep you've ever had? It's no. It's because you're tucked in with a really nice top sheet. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been to prison and been put in a straight jacket as well, Jala? <laughs> That's not comfortable getting No, stuck there's nothing down. better, Jala. Than have, you just... seen on, have you seen the movie Spider-Man where all the <laughs> villains are stuck up against a wall? <laughs> No, tight no, like that. Jala, I'm with you. With a tight top sheet feels I'm like. I am with you, Jala. There's nothing better. When I have to tug, when I have to tug so hard to get that top sheet out from, from you know, the made bed mm. that I almost pull yeah. my, my shoulder, my rotator cuff, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I am really happy to slide right into that sexy little sheet and, uh, yeah, just wriggle myself all around that nice, clean hotel Wait, bed. Wait, is that a four or against a top sheet? That's it. I'm a four and I love it. Oh, so you love hurting happened. your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, because it's so tucked in, because it's so taut. Oh, I love me a taut top sheet. All right, taut, Jala. Well, sheet. thank you very much for... Yes. Uh, taut toppy. You're a little, little taut toppy. Okay, um, next. So we'll go from Jala to Hayden in Davenport. Hayden, what do you reckon about a top sheet, mate? Throw them in the bin. They're rubbish. Uh, <laughs> your, 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 your opinion's rubbish, mate. That's what it deserves to be in the bin. Tell us your setup, mate. What does it, it look like? Do you sleep on a bare mattress, nude pillow with all the brown stains and just <laughs> some newspapers or something because you don't care about your comfort? Look, I sleep with a top sheet because I'm forced to by my wife, but if I oh. had my way, it would be in the bin. Oh, man. We, right. we had a top sheet the other night, and in the morning, literally, it was all on one side. It just crumples up. It just gets... Gets in the way. It doesn't make you any warmer. You no, throw it, it doesn't. Off, you have the top sheet over it, you. It doesn't do anything for you. If you're going to get rid of the doona, you might as well get rid of everything. It, 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 it yeah. tucks beautifully under your chin as you lie in your bed feeling cozy and secure and safe. I don't know what doonas you're using that make them not feel comfortable, but doona I've got <laughs> very comfortable. <laughs> That's oh, very, mate, very true. This is outrageous. Hey, Doss, we appreciate your input. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, boys. Now, we had an Instagram poll for the other one. Have we got a poll up yet for this? We do not need a poll for this. We need to tell the manufacturers of these sets, as as they've been referred to, that 
We don't need to catch them all. We can, we can we could do without one. Bron rightly said the top sheet is to protect the doona when it comes to the washing of it. Oh, okay, right. Is is that because it takes too much time to wash a doona? Yes. Putting the doona back in the doona case is the worst job in the world. It's as bad as putting the fitted sheet on the mattress, which is, well, that's the worst job. Then then having to put the, the doona back in the doona cover, oh, my gosh. I'd prefer so, to just burn the whole bed and sleep on the carpet. <laughs> so, so when you make the bed, though, do you tuck in the top sheet around the sides every single morning? What, yes, I look, and oh, I never so used to. So people who are used to saving time, oh, no. I'm saying you add it all up and the doona still comes out on top. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say anymore because, I, you, <laughs> you know, someone once told me never argue with a fool. <laughs> to they, just... they, uh, <laughs> they bring it down to your level and beat you with experience. Exactly. <laughs> um, now. I think Ian Dyson taught to that one, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, something like that. Um <laughs> <laughs> now, let's uh, let's do that. We'll get a poll up. It should be up now, I'd say, by the time you're hearing this. Tell us once and for all, what do you reckon? Uh, has, has humanity evolved enough to get rid of the top sheet or are we still having hula hoops under our petticoats? <laughs> <laughs> Matt.alex, let us know. All day breakfast. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Matt and Alex All Day Breakfast. Thank you very much. Edging closer to our 365th episode. I mean, we don't do it every day, so our... Uh, what ep- Bron, what episode's our, hun- our one-year anniversary going to be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> episode, it'd be about episode 200, wouldn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's been a great year, calendar year of All Day Breakfast. Um, make sure you send us a video of yourself playing an instrument if you'd like free tickets to the show and to be part of our awkward stra uh, where we're going to try and play Happy Birthday to officially, you know, give give the show the respect it deserves for turning one. An amazing achievement. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much to our insider today as well. Don't forget, if you have an insight into any career, any industry, you work doing literally anything. Get in touch with us and say, hey, I'm willing to give away some of the behind-the-scenes secrets. Also, thank you to everyone who, <clears throat> whether they're right or they're wrong, got in touch about Top Sheets. Uh, we are always open for rat, rant dog submissions. So if something's getting your goat, hit us up at matt.n.alex. Yeah, it's our favourite part chatting to you about uh, all things silly. So uh, please get in touch. Um, and we're going to leave you with another little tune on the melodica. Um, to say goodbye. Thank you very much for listening to All Day Breakfast. And Maddie, shall we take it away? Let's go. Oh, man, that takes a lot of breath. Wow. (laughs) Our Lord, Mr. Rude, Mr. Rude would uh, be very, very impressed. Listener.